When working with containers, it is very important to be mindful of how the underlying components that make up the containerization is built, distributed, and used. With great power comes great responsibility, as they say. Adapting Docker containerization comes with the responsibility to ensure that the use of this framework or model does not compromise your system with all the risk and security threats that always linger around. Hello, I'm Pablo Spot. I'm George. We are currently in a town several kilometers north of Sydney called Narabai, enjoying what the outdoor life offers. And in as much as I would like to share what it is like living outdoors, in today's topic, I will talk about the use of the most powerful user in all systems, and that is the root user. More specifically, I will talk about how the use of this user account in Docker containers that run in production environments post risk to your applications and systems. So, let's start coding. If you have been working on Linux-based operating systems, you would understand that huge amount of power that you have when you gain access to the root account. It is the super user account that has the super lord access and can virtually do anything on the system. It is the most attractive point of attack for hackers just because of the sheer amount of encompassing permissions that this user has and the amount of damage it can do in a Unix or Linux system. In some old systems, actual root user is configured just like any other normal Linux user. So you've got a root username and a password. And I hope this is no longer the case for any Linux systems because this is a re very risky setup. Nowadays, actual root users can be disabled in Linux systems. Modern day Linux access management and administration generally restrict users from gaining access to the root account via sudo which is short for super user do. This significantly helped prevent the actual root user from being compromised and allowed for some auditing capability in systems via sudo logs to determine what or who executed binaries or commands that require high privilege access to a system. And then we have containers. When it comes to best practices on containers, there is a lot of material suggesting that we refrain from using root user when, when writing our Docker configuration or even when starting containers. But what does this really entail? This territory can be a little bit complex to explain, but let's have a crack at it and see where my own explanation can take us. So think of a Docker container as an application that creates a nested operating system on top of a host or machine's operating system. It's sort, it's sort of a babushka doll. I have a few special engineers joining us on this episode today. <laughs> but let's have a look at my current terminal. This terminal is currently sitting on my kernel level state. And that means it's on the operating system level. And as soon as I instantiate a container, so let's say I'm going to start a Ubuntu container. Notice that my terminal prompt changes. This current session that I have here is the container session. It looks like I am connected to another host or virtual machine, but I'm actually connected to something that mimics a host or a virtual machine. And this is in fact just a normal application like my VS Code session or my web browser or any other application running on my machine. Also, Notice that I'm connected to the container session as a root user, which means inside the container, I can do all sorts of things that a root user can do. So let me try adding a new user. So that worked. And then I'm going to delete that user.
I can be creative as much as I can and dig for ways or make use of any vulnerability to infiltrate the main host operating system and cause havoc. So it is certainly not any different from having access to the same root user when you are in a normal host terminal session. So now that we have established that, let me quit this session and go back to my main terminal session. Generally, access to Linux systems are configured in a file called slash etc slash passwd. This is essential in determining ownership and permission to file systems in a host or on a machine. So let's quickly view what is inside the file. As you can see, this file contains a list of all users specific to the machine where it is in. So what this means is that the contents of the file you see here may not necessarily be the same as what is in another host or Linux machine. However, what is important to point out here are the user ID and group ID, which are the numeric values in each line on the list. And at the top of this file, second line is the root user details, which has user ID and group ID of zero. Now let me quit this file and go back to instantiating my Ubuntu container. So this session has its own etc passwd file. So let's have a look at that file. And in here, notice that the root user ID and group ID are also zero which is the same as what we saw earlier on my machine. And I want to illustrate the significance of this. So let me quit this session. And now that I'm back to my main host terminal session, I am going to cd to the bin directory and list all the files in here. Notice that all the files in this directory are owned by root user. So technically, if I try to rename any of the files in here using my own account, it should fail. So let's try to rename the test file in here. And I get an error message saying operation not permitted. However, if I instantiate my Ubuntu Docker container and mount the bin directory, I'm still logged in as a root by default. And if I cd to the temp bin directory, which is the mounted path, list the files here, and they're all still owned by root. And if I rename one of the files in here, let's say that might not have been intentional, but I managed to rename the file. This is because one, the etc passwd configuration for root is the same as the container and the host. And two, I am logging as root inside my container. So what this implies is if your container is configured to run as root by default and you have inadvertently mounted host path into container, you are putting not just your application at risk, but potentially your entire system infrastructure as well. This is why it is very highly recommended to use a non-root user when running containers. So let me reinstate back the file. and quit this session. And now I'm going to re-instantiate my Docker container, but this time I am going to use a user called nobody.
And if I go to temp bin directory, list the files in here. And now I'm going to attempt to rename the same file that I did earlier. That fails and I'm getting permission denied error. But what if the user you are trying to pass in the Docker run command does not exist? This is where we can customize the Docker image. So let me quit this session. Let's head back to my working directory. Let's create a new directory in here. And inside this directory, I'm going to create a Docker configuration file. So I'm going to use Ubuntu as my base image. And then add a new user called my user. And then I am going to set the default user as my user. Quit and save this file. And now let's build the Docker image. Now let me start a new container using my new image with the bin directory mounted into the Docker container. Notice that the prompt on my session no longer shows root. And instead, it is showing my user, which is the default user that I set inside the Docker configuration file. Now, let me try to execute a command that only root users can do. So let's attempt to add a new user. That did not go through, and I'm getting a permission denied error. Now, let me head to the temp bin directory, which is what I mounted when I sat in the container. list all the files in this directory and they're all owned by root now i'm going to try to rename a binary inside this directory and that also failed and that's all i have for today and i hope that provides a little bit of insights as to why you should refrain from configuring your Docker containers, especially those running in production, from using a default root user. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.